What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. So this will be a part two to the Jeepers Creepers 5 story that's been shared with me by Alistair. Again, shout out to you. You have cooked up a very intriguing first act. You got to keep feeding us this, sending it my way so I can talk about it on the channel. So this is a sequel to that video I did where I was going over Minxy and Jack Taggart Jr. having a son named Billy Taggart who is named after the brother we know that died at the end of Jeepers Creepers 2. This is a true sequel to Jeepers Creepers 2. It's set 23 years later. The Creeper has returned and Billy and a few others are stranded on his path to visit his grandfather I believe while on a train so it's borrowing ideas from the scrapped original script of Jeepers Creepers while also borrowing ideas and switching it around from what we know was supposed to happen for Trisha how she was supposed to have a son that was named after Derry etc but now we're applying that to Minxie and Jack Taggart Jr. with this character named Billy, who was named after the brother who again died at the beginning of the second film. So I'm going to be picking up where I left off with the train stopping. They're stranded. Seems like nobody's coming to help. And I'm going to talk about a newbie who, no, not a newbie, a returning person from Jeepers Creepers 2 who you gave a very fascinating role to Alistair. And you're doing a lot of fascinating things with the Creepers lore, the return, what it does on day one, all fascinating stuff. Just to jump into it. So a passenger on the train after it, this train has just come to an abrupt halt suggest that they exit the train and start looking for help but many of them are too scared to go outside now that it is dark the conductor is unable to open the exit doors including the emergency ones billy strongly advises everyone to stay on board the train asserting that it's not safe out there erica the young woman who millie was speaking with earlier has a good idea of where they are and is sure there's a farm only half a mile to the east this has to be her referencing the farm that belongs to billy's grandfather Billy says it's too dangerous. All the passengers have now gathered in the middle carriage, except for a married couple sitting together in the back carriage. The husband is desperately trying to get a signal on his smartphone. The wife suggests they move to the middle carriage where everyone else is. As the husband picks up luggage from under his seat, he looks through the window and spots a dark figure standing in a field at a distance away, seemingly looking at him. He turns to his wife, but when he looks back, the figure is gone. No doubtably this was the, or undoubtedly this was the creeper. We then cut to Petrilla County where we see Andy Buck, who is now a police officer. So this is Bucky from Jeepers Creepers 2, all grown up, and he's a police officer. He's driving down a highway. He is headed to Pohol County to investigate a 911 call from a woman who claims some sort of animal was on her property. Whilst driving, Bucky speaks with a superior officer over the police radio. For the past hour, the Poho Police Department have been receiving numerous reports of bizarre animals or bizarre of bizarre animal attacks from farmlands and highways all over the county. Bucky stops at a local diner, the same diner from the first movie. Bucky sees there is damage to the windows from the outside and finds the doors are locked. The manager lets Bucky in, where the customers are visibly shaken and scared. The manager tells Bucky that a pack of coyotes surrounded the diner and tried to break in about a half an hour ago. The manager says they're gone now, but heard him howling from, from nearby shortly before Bucky arrived. He said he and the others have never seen anything like this before. They rang the patrol of police for help, but were told their department didn't have any available officers to send. Bucky says the Poho police have received similar reports of animal attacks in the past hour. He promises he'll call in and get two officers from his department to come over to help them and advises they all remain inside the diner for the time being. As he leaves the diner, he overhears one of the customers say, it's the horror of Poho all over again. While and then back on the train, while the conductor attempts to operate the train in the driver compartment, Billy overhears the man telling his wife he thought he saw something in the field. Billy asked him to describe what he saw, but the husband says he didn't get a good look at it, but says it looked like a tall man wearing some sort of dark overalls. A passenger sitting near them says he was most likely just seeing things. But Erica notices that Billy is becoming increasingly anxious. His wife can't find her phone and realizes she must have left it in the back carriage. He goes back to the empty carriage whilst Erica confronts Billy and says she knows there's something he's not telling them. After finding his wife's phone, the husband sees several humanoid shadows in the carriage, despite no one else being there. The shadows move toward him. All the other passengers hear a brief yet horrific scream coming from where he is. His wife runs frantically into the carriage, only to find it empty with no trace of her husband or any signs of a struggle or damage. Bucky arrives at a secluded house in Poho, 
where the call was made about a wild animal. Bucky draws his gun, but sees no sign of anything. After receiving no answer at the front door, despite several lights on inside, Bucky walks around to the backyard and finds the bloody body of a dead woman laying on the ground. A black horse with pale white eyes attacks Bucky and he is forced to shoot it. He looks at its eyes like, it's, like it was possessed. After calling in the woman's death on the police radio, Bucky enters the house and learns the woman has a husband, but there's no sign of him. He finds the husband's private study room and after looking around, discovers the man has connections to Jack Taggart. Now, are you talking about junior or senior here, Alistair? Let me know. The phone in the kitchen suddenly rings. Bucky answers it in a distorted voice, addresses Bucky by his name, tells him that the creature has returned. Bucky asks who this is, but the voice tells him the creature controls the animals on the first day of its new cycle and uses them to spread fear as it searches for its new prey. Bucky repeats his question, but the voice ignores it, saying the creeper has already found its new prey. A frightened Bucky demands to know who he's speaking to and who its new prey is. The voice simply says, the last train for Poho. They end the call and Bucky races back to his car and speeds off. Now I'm curious also, Alistair, this voice on the phone, is this our lovely Giselle or is this someone else with Giselle-like qualities? I like everything you're cooking up here so far, man. You know exactly where you wanna take the story. You are keeping everything very mysterious. You're keeping everything suspenseful. You haven't really even overly shown the monster and I like how you're treating it. It's after 20, it's been 23 years. You're not just jumping right into the action of it all the way Jeepers Creepers 2 kind of does and you're keeping the monster in the shadows. You're letting these things start happening around these counties, building up to the inevitable of us seeing the creeper back in action 23 years later. All of this is good stuff. I like how you incorporated Bucky. You guys let me know, would you like to hear more of what Alistair has cooked up? Let me know down in the comment section below because I don't know about you guys, but he's he's cooking. This story is cooking. The fact that you cooked up a story that is this immersive, so suspenseful, and already has me intrigued to know how you see this ending, because I know you have more. You're just you just keeping me on the edge of my seat and keeping all of us on the edge of edge of our seats as I have to release video after video after video going over your story. But job well done, man. Send me the rest of it so I can keep going over it. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you go ahead and subscribe, turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video in the description. I will have links to all of my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, to let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And again, guys, these are just story ideas. This is not what's happening. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.